Today is a very special day. About a month ago, I sent off an order into the AliExpress Ether for one of the most legendary coolers in the budget game. I'm of course talking about the Snowman Cooler. Now coolers dubbed as the Snowman do have several different configurations, but we're looking today at the one that started it all. This is a single tower design that features four copper heat pipes and a 120 millimeter fan. Today, the Snowman is being pitted against not just the AMD Ryzen 5600X, but also the stock Wraith Stealth Cooler that ships with the 5600X and the Scythe Fuma 2. Let's see just how well this roughly $20 cooler holds up against the competition. So as we get this video kicked off, I do want to hear from those of you that actually have a snowman cooler in those comments down below. Let us know how it's doing for you. And since you're already there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button while you're down there. That was totally not shameless at all. Moving on. The snowman cooler ships with utter simplicity. Inside the box, you'll find the cooler itself and also a plastic mounting ring for Intel sockets. Many of these low cost Chinese cooler solutions have gone with this as their default mounting solution. And in fact, some Chinese X58, X79, and X99 motherboards have actually started shipping with this mounting solution inside those boxes as well. Basically, these coolers are making use of AMD's mounting clips that come standard on AMD motherboards. The clips on my cooler were quite stiff though, so I was a little bit concerned about having too much mounting pressure, but everything works just fine on the board and the CPU still runs, so I guess that's not a big problem. Just be careful as you mount the cooler to not break your motherboard, especially if your motherboard is a less expensive one and therefore more flimsy in general. This decision gives the Snowman great socket compatibility without the need for complicated directions, which is great because there are no directions in the box. Yep, that's it. The cooler and the mounting hardware, no directions, and more importantly for someone that doesn't need the directions to begin with, like myself, there's also no thermal paste of any kind, so you'll just have to budget out a few extra dollars for thermal paste. I'm sure the move to eliminate thermal paste from the box was a cost-cutting solution, but it doesn't stop me from being annoyed by it because, again, that does add cost to the end consumer. As previously mentioned, the Snowman has four copper heat pipes on board, and those are direct contact heat pipes with no cold plate between the CPU and the copper itself. The fin stack is a basic design that very much resembles other generally slightly more expensive name brand options, though the sides of the fins are very distinctly a Snowman design. Basically, what I'm saying is the Snowman borrows from the competition, but it's probably not fair to call it a straight up ripoff of those other solutions. Now testing here is very basic and to be perfectly honest, nowhere near as scientific or as in depth as you might find somewhere else. The test bench ran an IDA64 stress test with the Ryzen 5600X for 10 minutes. I'm mostly concerned here with where the temperature stabilized on each of the three coolers. The Wraith Stealth, which ships with the 5600X, the Scythe Fuma 2, which is generally much more expensive than the Snowman, and of course the Snowman itself. After each cooler reached a stable temperature, sound clips were taken for comparison of noise. And as expected in the testing of these coolers, the Wraith Stealth cooler was completely outmatched by both the Fuma 2 and the Snowman. There's just not enough mass on the Wraith Stealth to provide cooling that keeps the 5600X well under control. In a well-ventilated case, the Stealth isn't likely going to burn the CPU to death, but it's certainly going to drag the clock speeds down under extended workloads, especially ones that hit all the cores like a dump truck. The Fuma 2 and the Snowman performed extremely similarly in this test, and there's probably a couple of of contributing factors that narrow the gap between the coolers. First, the Scythe cooler's fans are built with noise in mind. In the sound test, I felt like the Scythe and Snowman coolers seemed similar in sound, but in person, at least to my ear, it sounded like the Scythe cooler was quieter than the Snowman. That combined with the Snowman fan reacting to rising temperatures a little bit more aggressively gave us very similar performance numbers, at least in the Ida stress test. With that being said, the Snowman cooler was not loud. Yes, it was audible on the open test bench, but unless you're as sensitive to PC noise as a bad at, you're not likely to notice it, especially once you're in a game. If you're a headphone user, the noise 
percent will not be a reason to pass on the snowman especially if you're looking at a mid-tier cpu that isn't drawing huge amounts of power anyways with the testing out of the way though we do need to address the biggest problem with the snowman cooler and that is the shipping at least in the united states amazon has several coolers that are priced at or near that roughly 20 dollars price tag of a snowman cooler which is usually roughly that cost at least on aliexpress obviously it will go up and down a little bit Deepcool's Gamax 400 is one that comes to mind. It also features four direct copper heat pipes and also has a 120 millimeter fan. Now to me, the neutral aesthetics of the Snowman are better than Gamax's blue LED fan, but simply cutting the LED wire on the Deepcool unit would completely solve that issue. And by the way, the uh, Gamax 400 is linked below if you're interested in picking it up or just checking its current pricing and availability. Now it took right at a month for the Snowman to arrive at my door. And while shipping times will vary depending depending on where in the world you are, it's impossible to ignore similarly priced alternatives that may be available regionally, especially when those alternatives could be at my door in two to three days as opposed to an entire month. Now from a purely performance standpoint, I couldn't be much happier with the Snowman cooler, especially when you're considering its $20 pricing. If you're putting together a system but you're taking your time acquiring the parts, the Snowman may be the new go-to budget-friendly cooler that gives good looks in most settings, gives very very good performance to all but the most power hungry CPUs and it doesn't break the bank while it's at it. You know what else doesn't break the bank? Dropping a comment down below to let us know what you think of this legendary snowman cooler, especially if you're someone that actually owns and uses the snowman on a daily basis. Let us know what your thoughts are down below. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit those like and share and subscribe buttons. Throw that comment down there. Those are all very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Who's Your Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.